Hey guys, welcome to Pod Sauce. I'm Dax Holt. I am Alicia Renee. It is time, Alicia. It is. We got a guest. Guys, please welcome to Pod Sauce Will Rodriguez, the host of the Skeptic Metaphysician Metaphysics 101. Get wow. into that. High five. You Get did it. That. <laughs> I, I, I literally, it. before this, I was like, Alicia, you're going to have to take the name because I've been trying <laughs> this metaphysician. I like couldn't say it. You did your best. <laughs> I will. Happy to be here, and you said the name perfectly, so no, no worries. Accent and all, I just breezed right through it. I was like, "No, girl, you got this. <laughs> Believe in yourself, and you will deliver." Metaphysics, break it down. Metaphysics, uh, it's it's the it's the act of discovering what's out there that's not in the three dimensional world. I'm I'm one of these people that really loves this stuff. I love them, but I don't know if I'm a hundred percent on board with them. Right, so. So the show is really kind of a journey discovery for me to, to, to look into these modalities and see what speaks to me, like, like what kind of proof I need. I want to believe. I really do. I want to believe, but I need, I need proof. I can't just go on blind faith. So I talk to people who have experienced all kinds of things. I've talked to clairvoyants and people who do psychic investigations and healers and witches and vampire. I just I just interviewed a vampire. All right, for got my attention. I'm <laughs> in. This one Vampires up. and witches and clairvoyance. <laughs> Sign me up. Well, I love this. And, you know, one thing as you're talking about this, you know, I, I'm I'm listening to kind of these. I, I I don't know how to explain it, but things that maybe people wouldn't necessarily gravitate towards unless there was a, an Cultural occurrence in thing. their life yeah. or something. And I know that in the past, you had some like crazy stressful thing happen at work where it turned you on to studying about this stuff. Is that not accurate? That, that's true. Exactly. Yeah. I Like everybody else during COVID times, uh, we all had some, some struggles. Uh, I had a personal tragedy that happened um, that, I mean, I can't mince words. Can't mince words. I had a mental breakdown, um, so bad that I I mulled actually going to a hospital to try to get my head on straight. Um, so I looked into all the mental health stuff out there, trying to get myself better. Right, I went to the therapist and all that kind of stuff, but it wasn't enough for me. I, it was almost like an existential crisis. Uh, I I have a high risk, high stress job, so it contributed to it for sure. But then I found that I needed more. I needed to find, like, why are we here, right? What, what's the purpose of it? Why, why am I doing it? Why am I beating myself up as much as I am in life, right? There's got to be something more than this. So it really launched. I've been interested in this stuff for a long, long time, but I didn't really dive into it as deeply as I dove, I dove into it now. So what did because you find of out, this Will? <laughs> why are we here, Will? Like this, Tell this. me everything. <laughs> Well, uh, I have all the answers. I have them all. <laughs> right here on my show. You know what's so funny, though, Will? Like, nothing that you're saying is foreign to me. You know, and it may be a cultural thing because I'm Creole, so I'm from Louisiana, but my grandmother is a Native American. And so a lot of, like, astral projections and whatnot, that, that's really heavy in the Native American culture. But, you know, as far as spirit, the spirit world and, you know, the divinity of, like, past lives and all those other things are very prevalent in the Creole culture. So I'm just like, yes, and tell me more. <laughs> um, because I, this may sound weird to our, our listeners and hopefully I don't weird you as you're learning more. But I used to astro, astro project when I was younger. You, what does that even mean? It's, it's when your spirit basically like can leave your body and travel the plane in a different, different, <laughs> I'm looking at him like, what? I'm serious, I'm like, oh, like when I was, when I was rolling, you know like, how oh, much yeah. money I would save if went I could just that, travel without that. spending money? No, but it's really just like, it's, it's, it's being able to detach your spirit from person and where you can look about and surveil. And, and, and it's so funny because then we would be to places I'm like, God, I've been here before. My mom's like, Alicia, we, you've never been. I'm like, no, I've been here before. And I could say like, turn here and, the thing that I thought was around the corner was around the corner. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So like, and I've always wanted to get a Reiki because I'm, I'm like, with the luck that I've had in the dating department, surely I must have messed over somebody or slept with somebody's husband in a previous life because this karma is trash. <laughs> so what do I need to do? <laughs> well, well, first, let me say I'm super jealous because I've been wanting to, to ask to project for my, as long as I can remember, mm -hmm. never been able to do it. But uh, there, there's so I actually have spoken to people who can astral project. There's actually a, an institute here in Virginia mm -hmm. called the Monroe 
Institute that oh. actually teaches people how to astral project. Mm. This all started back um, in the, gosh, I'm going to say it's the 60s or 70s. The CIA created a project called the Gateway Project to see if they were trying to compete with the Russians who were trying to do these, um, these studies to see if they could actually spy on people in the astral plane. So the CIA built this whole gateway project to try to get their spies to be able to astral project. And that's where it all kind of started developing from, from that. Wow, it's so this, this is a whole nother world. I love it. This yeah, is fascinating. None, none of it is foreign. So with all the guests that you've had on your show, I mean, obviously, the witch, the vampire is what speaks to me most. <laughs> but who is the person that you're like, if someone's coming into your show for the first time, you say, listen to this episode. And it's not a witch. She's a Wiccan. The There's... witchy Wiccan. <laughs> not the witchy Wiccan. <laughs> yeah, I, learned, I learned something that actually not all witches are Wiccan. Okay, Believe break it, it down. Okay, we'll get me together, Will. Me. Talk to me. Yeah, I, I was shocked too because I thought Wiccan was, I mean, it's just the, the, the modality. But it turns out there are Wiccans. And there are people who just practice witchcraft or practice who do rituals that allow them to manifest things or, you know, you've heard of the love spells and the protection spells and all that kind of stuff. They don't necessarily have to become Wiccan. Wiccan, a Wicca is a religion. It's an actual religion right. that not all witches follow. So it, it, okay. it was super, super interesting to me because I, I it's like you, I thought it was the same thing, but it's really not. Well, thank you for uh -huh. that clarity. Yeah. Sorry, Dax, because no, I, I definitely was like, no, uh, no, that's not what it is. That's a witchy wicked. <laughs> so, <laughs> <a> witchy so, wicked. <laughs> so what episode would you tell people, absolutely, come listen to this one. You're, it, it, it might entice people to really start listening to all of your episodes. I think the law of attraction, did, it, did an episode on the law of attraction, this guy Benji Shearer came on the show. And I, like I said, I'm, I'm super pragmatic. So uh, I always thought law of attraction, manifesting that kind of stuff was, was kind of wishy-washy, was magical powers kind of thing. I didn't really truly believe in it. But this guy came on the show and he explained it in such a pragmatic way, so clear that I, I th this is probably one of the most brilliant men I've ever interviewed. And I've interviewed a lot of people. And this, this is probably one of the most brilliant people I've inter ever interviewed because he explained it so perfectly so wonderfully that I, I just sat back and, and let him speak. He was he was unbelievable. I'm going to so. go online and I'm going to listen to that episode. It's so funny. Well, um, <clears throat> just in speaking in regards to like the law of attraction, because it's so funny, people will teach to have a visualization for what you want and get your mindset and your energy set on what you want. And again, I'm going to listen to this episode. You might have already talked about it in that particular episode, um, but that's what we were writing down. Um, but people hardly talk about the detachment, the law of detachment, because with attachment, attraction, you have to also add in the law of detachment. And it basically just means I trust that this thing is coming, you know, and I can let it go. I don't have to like hover over it and I'm not married to the end result of that thing, right? So you can say I want a million dollars, but not be married to how you get that million dollars, right? So when you're able to release what you're trying to attract, that's when you're actually able to get it. But oftentimes we have this vision in our mind of like what we want, where we want to be, how we want to get there. It doesn't leave room for life to come in and bring in in the most highest and divine way, whatever it is that we desire. Yeah, he goes even further to say that you actually have to feel, you have to feel the emotions that come with attaining that thing that you want. Mm. Uh, and, and until you get, until you feel those emotions, it's not going to happen to you. The, the caveat here, the crazy thing is here that once you already feel those emotions, that thing that you really were looking for, mm -hmm. you really don't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. That's that's where right. the detachment comes in. It's like, oh, OK, right. yep. I can let it go. Yeah. All right. Give me a little sneak peek of the vampire <laughs> episode. <laughs> I love it. You were waiting for that. Why like, don't you just me, ask him just that? Tell I me. want to know about the vampire. <laughs> All right. Well, her name is Lady Anne Celine, and she has full on fangs and everything. And uh, she is, uh, <clears throat> how can I explain Are this? Are these dental fangs or like she was born with fangs? No, I'm, I'm pretty sure she had them made, but I, I, I kept asking her if the fangs are permanent and she wouldn't answer. So I'm, I'm wondering if there are or not, but she had them on while I was interviewing her and it was the most unnerving thing yeah. because she was, I mean, the whole, the cameo around her neck and the, the onk and the, the, the fangs and the goth, was everything. She pale? The, 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 what's that? Was she pale? She was really pale with kind of red hair. Uh, I mean, she 100% she looked legit to me. 
And the interesting thing is that because I guess she's part of the, there's a whole vampire underground that I, I wasn't aware of. So when I asked her about everyone thinks that vampires are you know, creatures of the dark, servants of Satan, that kind of thing. Like what would make someone go into that uh, side of life? She shocked me by saying that the only thing she's found in the vampire underground has been love and support. Like it is not at all what we think about. And uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> she doesn't really live on blood. Does it, she drink blood though? She does not, which what? is a little, a little unsettling. <laughs> Disappointing. <laughs> yeah. God. But it's, a fake vampire. A fake though. vampire. <laughs> it's it's more about energy, uh, feeding off of energy, mm. basically. You know, Will, it's so funny. I know you uh, temporarily, I think, I don't know if you're still part of it, but joined a Wicca group, um, and you found that it was very comparable to Catholicism, which I find very curious because I grew up Catholic. Um, I'm now non-denominational, but I grew up Catholic. So I, it, But I, too, was sharing with a girlfriend of mine uh, when we took this trip to New Orleans and we were talking about, like, the difference in, because she's from a Yoruba uh, nation and, or tribe. And a lot of their deities are very comparable to how we look at the saints. Um, so if you don't mind, what were the similarities that you found between Wicca and Catholicism? I'm very curious. Rituals. Okay. It's all about rituals, right? Catholicism has all the rituals of the, uh, the wafer and the wine and all the, the baptism. And it's, it's very ritualized, that religion. So is Wicca. It's very ritualized where um, now... The differences are stark in that they they don't believe that there's such a thing as a devil. There's no such thing. Uh, they actually worship a god or goddess, a deity of a different type. It's not you know God as we know God to be. Um, but they they go through these rituals uh, in Wicca. You have a 13 month apprenticeship. At which point, then you get initiated into the coven, and then the real secrets are revealed at that point. That kind of stuff. But there's a there's a high priest mm -hmm. that that uh, uh, kind of leads the group, uh, but there's also even higher is a high priestess in the group, right? So uh, they really worship in a lot of ways the, the moon. They draw down the moon. Um, so there's a lot. I mean, really, probably rituals is the most common thing between them. But then there's a lot of things that depart that we could really dive into because there's some. So are you still a part of a coven? I'm not. I'm not. I, Are you I found adjacent? that uh, maybe adjacent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I found I, what I found the most about this journey so far is that uh, it, it seems like ev we're all saying the same thing, just we're saying it in different languages, mm -hmm. with different words. Right? Uh, it's. I found that Wicca is not my path. It, it's a path that is perfectly valid for someone, but it's certainly not my path. But I found that as long as you pick a path, it doesn't matter what path. Some things might resonate more to you than others. But as long as you're on a path, we're all going to the same place. Mm -hmm. We all want the same things, really. We just need to be able to allow each other the freedom to express what resonates with us the best way we can. That's There's no need to say what you believe is bull. That, right. That's so beautifully stated, and it's funny because that's the same explanation that I give to my friends whenever we're talking about religion, because uh, I'm very blessed and very fortunate to have a, a great circle of friends and family around me who run the gamut, right? Like, I have friends who practice Hinduism, Judaism, you know, I have a few, few friends who are, you know, Islamic, uh, the, uh, like, Christian, non-denominational. Um, I don't have an atheist, though. Um, I just noticed that. I don't think I have a... Okay. But that's exactly what I say. I'm like, I fervently believe that there's only one God. Every religion just allows people to go through life in its ups and downs in the best way possible and navigate it and make it in a way that's portable and palatable for them. And I don't think that this way is better than that way or, you know, whatever. Because like I said, although I may be Christian, I'm non-denominational. I don't think that denominations matter. That's just to me. You know, I think that it can get in the way, but I agree wholeheartedly with like what you're saying. And, and I love hearing other people think that people should have the freedom to, you know, follow re the religion that Believe speaks best to want. them. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And at the end of the day, isn't it just really focusing your intention, right? When, when uh, more than two people are in a room 
praying is supposed it's 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 a stronger um, intention you're putting out into the world. The more people that pray together, that's why you go to church together on Sunday. You pray yeah. together. You can make things happen. Same general principle with Wicca. It's really just about focusing your intention and making things happen. In, in, in the coven, it just happens to be 13 other people or 13 people with you in a church much bigger. But um, someone told me about um, um, the old, my old high priestess talked about the, a flame of a candle where the flame, there's a small plume of smoke uh, rising from the top of the flame. Our intentions are just like that plume of smoke or that flame so that when we're, we're thinking things so strongly or we're praying for something so hardcore, it's really just getting that plume of smoke out into the universe to make something happen. So interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, Will, one of the, I think the, the best things about our show is finding new podcasts like yours, but also being able to give advice to other people or put them on to another podcast. Is there any podcasts that you're listening to right now that you think someone out there might really enjoy? Yeah, there is a podcast. If you like, if you like the the monsters and the vampires and the supernatural kind of thing, there is a uh, a show out there called the Caravan Library of Lore. The Caravan that, Library oh, of you. Lore. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> that's free. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's a seasonal show. So she goes from October until the end of January. So th this latest episode she released it is, has to do with Bigfoot and Sasquatch, but she goes into all kinds of different supernatural things. She even talks about stories that she's had herself as a paranormal investigator um, about, you know, entities kind of grabbing her hair when she's out in the basement of somewhere. Nope. Or uh, a, 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 a scary, ghastly figure coming up the stairs and only to find it's just a shadow, but there was, it was, there was nothing attached to it, things like that. Um, if nope. you like the creepy quality stuff, don't play. <laughs> I almost, almost stabbed it with my, with my, with my pen. Don't play. Go ahead. Yeah. But but she's also happens to be a vampire witch, so she really knows what she's talking about. And, I uh, love this already. She's a vampire witch. Not a only twofer. you get a, a twofer. twofer. <laughs> All right, Caravan of Lore, sign me up. Caravan of Lore. Thank you so much, Will. Will Rodriguez, host of. The Skeptic Metaphysician, Metaphysics 101. And if you guys want to hear more on that podcast, Jack, tell them where to go. Head on over to podsauce.com. Right there, you can sign up for our newsletter, and we can hand deliver you fun stuff, any recommendations. <laughs> uh, but it, it is the best place to obviously watch full episodes of our show and uh, get all of our recommendations right there on the website. Thank you again so much, Will. He's definitely going to ease on down that road to learn all about the what the the, the, the vampire, vampire witches. The vampire witch. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha